Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we are cupping Alma coffee. I got a really nice package in the mail. You might have seen it on the uh, on the Instagrams. Very pretty packaging. Look at this. This is very expensive. <laughs> and even the material of the bag is very expensive. I would know. I've looked. Uh, so props to that. If I would, this is not a review of your packaging, but it's very, very, very nice packaging. I won't be cupping this one because it's a, um, I didn't have enough. <laughs> so, um, but I will, I'll do it in another video possibly. Um, uh, but thank you so much for the very generous samples. That's very nice of you. Um, here they are. They're all laid out. They're kind of numbered here from one to six. And then like a traditional cupping table, we start from this side and go this way. Um, we have a lot of darker roasts on the table and we're going to be cupping these darker roasts along with these lighter roasts, which will be interesting. Um, I don't normally do that just because it's so hard to do that. So if, if I was, if I was going to cup coffee, say to buy, I definitely wouldn't do that. I would, I would cup like all light roasts and see what the green has to offer. The goal with this cupping is to have fun, is to explore, is to discover, is to share all my coffee with you guys. And there you go. Stop. Let's clear the grounds. Actually, we'll break the crust and then clear the grounds. You even have a decaf out here. Fun. Okay, so we've broken the crust. These four really similar roasted grape nuts, things like that. Number two stood out to me as a standout. Number one, um, grape nuts again, but maybe not as strong, not as roasted. So yeah, the goal with this cupping is to share Alma coffee with you guys since Alma coffee has shared coffee with me. And I think that's one of the best things about coffee is the sharing. You'll notice with the dark roast, they get very like cupcakey. <laughs> they have like a cupcake of grounds available for you. And when they're light, you know, you'll see less of that. So just, you know, observational things. We're probably gonna have to clear this water out, get some new water. Don't be afraid to like clear your water cups out. I used to see Clatch do that a lot just to make sure we have nice, you know, clean water or relatively clean water to clean off our, our spoons, especially if they were doing, you know, like 24, 36 cups at a time. We're definitely gonna need more. You know, being such a small roaster, with a small space, everything is small over here. I usually don't need to do that. And you'll notice too, like some of the water levels are off just cause it got so cupcakey. And so I think with, you know, if we're trying, if we were doing this properly, we would try to um, be really cognizant about how much water was in the cups. But again, that's not the goal is not to be so meticulous about this. This is to discover and to share the flavors that we get from Alma's coffees. Now, the background of Alma coffee is that they are directly trading with supposedly a family farm. I'll throw it up all in the description or maybe on the screen, but I'm kind of like, you know, shooting from the hip at this point based on the information on their bag is that they directly trade. Now, what does direct trade mean? Do I direct trade? No, I get my coffee from a middleman, which is Hasea, and they direct trade, <laughs> or they supposedly uh, direct trade with a farmer or producer, we call them producers, because they produce the product or the, uh, the agriculture. Gotta get these little big floaters out of there. And then I buy it for them. So I don't do any, I don't do any direct trade. 
but Alma Coffee is a roaster that has a connection or a direct line to the farm. They don't go through Hasea or through Cafe Imports or any other, other importer, like Hasea is an importer or middleman. Um, so that means that they can get a, a better rate, possibly. Um, these are all possibly. Better rate, possibly. A better connection. They get possibly a uh, first pick of the crop, right? I didn't know this, but when I was at Clatch, they were like, yeah, so we have a, a direct connection with a lot of our uh, producers and, and we get to choose first. Like we're first on the list of the producer when they call up and they get the first dibs basically. So not every importer has first dibs on things. So in a way, I would assume if, if uh, Alma Coffee has a direct line to their family farm, like is it their family farm? Uh, we can confirm all that later. Um, they have first dibs on the coffee. So maybe the best of the harvest, right? Interesting. What does that mean? Let's find out. We're going to cup it. And again, it's about five minutes in, so we can actually go in here. Okay, let's get some new water though, for sure. Yeah, so the water level, see, has dropped on these darker roasts. It's not exactly, um, you know, the same as these light roasts. And that's why you would kind of want to like, I guess, just be a little bit more mindful of darker roast cupping because of that. They get so fluffy at the top, so they take off a lot of water. Um, and we cannot really add water in here because that would be sort of like a bypass. You're bypassing actually um, extracting on the ground. So all I would be doing if I added water now is diluting the cup. So we're just going to make note of it. If this, if this tastes a little strong or a little bitter, maybe that's something that's affecting the taste. So we'll just keep that in mind, okay? See, it's good to yak a little bit. We're six minutes in. Let's give these a whirl. Move these over. All right, number one. Okay, number one, solid light roast. Um, it's berries, it's fresh, it's kind of green. Number two, very nice. It's got that sort of like uh, whiny berries, um, sort of fermentation flavor to it. I taste the ferment. I love the ferment flavor note. Um, the difference between like, Maybe what could signal to you in your brain if you're going like, well, what is ferment? What does she mean? I would say it's kind of similar to like, um, think of the sweetness and tartness at the same time, sweet and tart at the same time of like jam. Uh, like jams are really common, you know, flavor note descriptor. Um, uh, ferment. Yeah, I think I think jam. It's sort of like this like I can smear it There's something thick about it and sweet and tart at the same time. I don't know uh, Maybe somebody in the comments will have a better way of explaining. What does ferment? Mean I, I say ferment all the time But maybe if I could break it down even more than that what would ferment? How would you describe ferment put it in the comments? Okay, number three Mmm <laughs> Smoky, bitter, roasted chocolate, no acidity here, <laughs> smooth, bold, dark. Number four, <laughs> roasty but some acidity there. I call it a, a two, maybe a three on the scale of acidity. 
mm -hmm. because I still feel this sort of like on the sides of the tongue there. Versus if I were to do it here, nothing. It's like, it's like just coating a lot of body there, but nothing doing that in my mouth. Those are your like hints. You, you can even tell too with the color, if I'm going in as a cupper, I go, I, I see this having a lighter color around the brim versus this one. Automatically, it's telling me this may be lighter. This may be lighter, right? Um, what are the flavors? Malty. Um, kind of like a marmalade. So not quite jam and not quite like citrus, not anywhere near there. <laughs> Malty and good. Number five. <laughs> it tastes similar to my coffee when I roast medium dark, there's a sharpness to it. It lingers, how does it linger? It lingers on the back upper part of your mouth and is sort of like, <laughs> it's like there's something thick about it. There's something sharp about it, almost aggressive in that. I, I feel like this was roasted fast <laughs> or with you know, a lot of energy. I don't know. Like, that's just the vibes I'm getting. I could be totally wrong, okay? I'm just going with my first impression. And as and as a cupper, I'm really trying not to be so limiting to myself. Because if, if I'm learning uh, to cup and I'm learning not to be so, like, tiptoey around what I'm tasting because I'm afraid that I'm not saying the right words, then I'm really not helping myself out. I really just need to go with what I'm tasting because taste is subjective, right? Eventually, if I wanted to be at that level, I would go ahead and calibrate to, oh, that's not, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever. But for the purposes of this, and I wanna show you what is the process of how do we just get better at cupping, is we try not to limit ourselves so much, try not to be so like, am I saying the right words? Cause I'm probably not, but, <laughs> but um, that's not the point. That's not the point of this, you know? Number six. <laughs> Roasty but sweet. A nice bitter and acidity there. More bitter, less acidity, but the acidity is there. Kind of like number five. Um, it's not gone, you know? Yeah, a really good acidity here, even though it's a dark roast. Uh, five is more acidic than six, okay? And that's what you guys can do too, like at home, is like, I don't know, it's very similar. It's like, okay, so just go back and forth. Like five is five more acidic than six, something like that, like a question like that. Is one better than two? Is four better than five? Okay, and then you start, you can just start to help yourself out to narrow it out. That way you can start to just find the best cup on the table. Mm. Okay, yeah. So I'm going off the feeling the taste, of course, obviously, but the feeling, the physical feeling of um, I'm looking for acidity, which one's more acidic? And I said that five, yeah, and I'll go back and validate that again. And yeah, that holds true for me still. We're at what, 14 minutes. Yeah, that's good. So we're, we're fairly cool enough, but not too cool and not too hot to be able to make these sorts of distinctions because uh, temperature, mass, flavor, right? So yeah, I would say five is more acidic than six. And in the end, I think I like five better for my palate because it has a little bit more bite to it. I like, I like the bite in my mouth 
of the cup of my coffee or the bite, the, the flavor profile to, to go on a, a little journey, not to just go like in a straight line, but to be like, whoa, ooh, like something like that. I need something dynamic in the mouth to go on, on the palate versus just going on a straight line. For example, I think it was number this one. I would, I would say this guy travels in a straight line. He's a, he's a very responsible, <laughs> um, safe, conservative driver. These guys, they play a little bit. They're still conservative, still conservative. This one's a little bit more riskier than this guy, right? Like he, he makes a little bit more unpredictable curves. And uh, this one, <laughs> mm, a lot of things going on here. I'm tasting now some like orange, multi milk chocolate, dark chocolate mixed together, um, like hazelnuts. This is a nice dessert. This is nice. This one, I'm definitely going to add like cream. This is a solid straight base. We're adding cream, we're maybe, you know, making to espresso, we're gonna add milk, you know, we're gonna do that thing. And it's got a great strong base for that. Number two, which I, you know, on the table was the most exciting. Oh, wow. Ooh, this is special. Ferment, ferment, ferment. And there's this thing at the end kind of um, <sighs> musty, musk, musty, <laughs> stinky, not stinky. It's, it's the thing that kind of is just like, uh, it comes with fermented things like this, this thing. <laughs> on the end, on the finish. <laughs> Interesting, complex, a lot of things going on there. But yeah, there's this little musty thing at the end. I like it still. That comes with it sometimes with uh, fermented coffees. All coffees are fermented, you know, don't, don't get me wrong there, but the, the process of the coffee, I taste the process here. Um, and without looking at the back, maybe it's that, um, that honey one or that lactic one or something like that. That crazy process one. I'm tasting the process. Number one, <laughs> mm, just a clean, <laughs> elegant sort of profile. They're not going like this, right? They're not like a this kind of driver, but just like, whoa. It's like a, <laughs> like a symphony. The flavors are sort of a <laughs> red, red berries <laughs> a gentle citrus nothing crazy nothing um nothing like ethiopia citrus not like that like not, not that bright like not that high not green at all like when i smelled it i i thought it was green or when i first tasted it maybe now that it's had a chance to cool <laughs> and it's really rounded off by a really nice, sweet, honey, chocolate kind of thing. <laughs> Just clean, pleasant, really reminiscent of this, the Guji, yeah, which is a natural processed coffee. Just clean, clean in its flavor, sort of elegant. Number two, very, the most exciting on the table. <laughs> that ferment quality. If you like ferment, if you like natural process, if you like lactic stuff, maceration, skin contact, all those like th things that parallel wine, like natural wine processing, you'll like this one. <laughs> all right, let's do a reveal. We're at 21 minutes. Number one, honey process. Oh, honey process. Oh, how should I do it? I should just, I should just, I don't know. Number two, 
Natural process. Oh, okay. Um, number three, enchanted dark roast. Yep, it was dark. <laughs> number four, decaf. Very nicely done on the decaf. I could still taste a lot of flavors going on there. Very complex still cup. And this is why, you know, when you, when you roast uh, specialty coffee decaf, you're not going to just get like meat. Like, oh, it's decaf. Like, there's a lot of uh, bad talk about decaf. Well done on the decaf. Okay, essence espresso roast. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So I said this one was like the, the most exciting out of the darks. Had some punch back for me. Nice as an espresso, yes, very good. Um, passion, medium dark roast. Yeah, I think this is what I, um, I try to do this. A lot of times I do this in terms of profile and, and cup and medium dark roast called passion. Very nice. Okay, what's the altitude of all these coffees? It says they're all a little different. So like this one was thousand meters from Honduras, the Copan region. Hope I'm saying that right. 1400 meters. 1400 meters from Selva Negra. Matagalpa, Nicaragua. Oh, okay, this is from Nicaragua, the decaf from Nicaragua. Okay. Um, this one's from Honduras, 1,000 meters, the dark roast, the straight driver. <laughs> Number two from Honduras, 1,400 meters, not just natural process coffee. Honey, honey process, 1,400 meters from Honduras. Okay, reserve roast, bright roast. Women farmed, wow, really cool. Yeah, rose water, red grape, black tea. Okay, sorry, I'm not that elegant in my <laughs> tasting notes. Okay, let's read a little bit about Alma Coffee, a farmer's commitment. As fifth generation coffee farmers, we consider every detail in creating the perfect cup of coffee, the seeds, the plants, the roasting process, and the brew are all part of crafting coffee with soul. Being a farmer makes all the difference. All right, myalmacoffee.com. First generation roasters, fifth generation farmers, service disabled veteran owned. Wow. Roasted on the fourth. Very cool. Small batch farm to cut. Very pretty, just super pretty. Cool. I'm sure this will be good too just based on these guys. All right, that was our cupping. Thank you to Alma Coffee for sending your, your coffee to have be cupped here. That was really fun. Um, favorites out of, the, out of here. I gotta go with this, the natural process. This decaf was really well done. That was right here. Out of the darks, I liked number five, which was this guy. The Essence Espresso Roast. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like that one better. That decaf's really good. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. I'm fully caffeinated. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> we'll go off to edit these. And uh, if you wanna send coffee for us to cup, I would love to do that. You can send it to the address in the description. Thanks again. All the links mentioned uh, will be in the description below and we'll see you next time, bye.